This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and I have racing royalty. That's right, Kelly Earnhardt Miller. She is the co-owner and general manager of Junior Motorsports and author of a book that is so timely and so important for everyone to get. It's called Drive, The Nine Lessons uh, to Win in Business and in Life. This is the time to win in business and life. Kelly, uh, people are in a compressed time. You're in the motorsports world. You are a driver. You're a co-owner. There's nothing that compresses uncertainty and change more than racing, uh, because our lives are at stake. And it's almost like I'm sitting here in my closet, like I feel like I'm an actual race driver, where the issues that a driver has, you know, really life or death, speed of decisions, like all these important things. Number one, what inspired you to write the book? Because obviously you started writing it before these times. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thanks for having me on today. I'm glad to be here. Um, and uh, I started writing this book 18 months ago. So I had no idea that as uh, the book dropped about a week ago and that we would be in the midst of these times with the COVID-19 uh, situation that we're all in. And um, so very nervous and worried uh, about releasing a book during that time. But uh, as I've been reminded, and I can remind myself, and, and you brought it up uh, just in our introduction uh, before we got on air, uh, it's, it's a great book for these times. And uh, so I started writing the book 18 months ago. I wanted to write a book about my relationship with my dad and growing up as Del and Hart's daughter. And, uh, you know, our NASCAR fans are so loyal. They want to know so much information. So it's a story that I really haven't talked about and shared uh, a lot of in the past. And so um, I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about therapy and helping people and just the goodness that came out of that for me uh, personally. And uh, in talking with a publisher, we sort of, as we began discussions, uh, we morphed into sort of half autobiography and half of the story that I wanted to tell and then dove into um, my personal business experience, which made a lot of sense. It just didn't hit me. To me, it was not like, who wants to hear about my business um, uh, acumen? So, um, but as we got to talking about it um, and, and we started spelling out the principles and the lessons and all those things, you know, they're, they're just really, I say they're good for relationships, period. Sure. Well, we're interrelated beings. Now, out of the, the nine, what are some that come to mind to you that you think uh, we should be focused in on while this uh, pandemic is going on? Uh, you know, is there one or two that stand out to you? And could you share a few stories with us? Yeah, you know, one for me is um, the biggest one is probably managing my emotions. Uh, I have a whole chapter about that. Um, something, you know, real important from a business standpoint, just real important in relationships that you have uh, a period. But, um, you know, in the very, we've been out of work for, uh, shoot, this is going on our fifth week now. And um, the very first week, you know, it was scary. We were making decisions in the middle of March without a lot of information about what was happening, how the world was going to react, act. And, you know, you didn't know if you were going to be out of work for a week or three weeks or five months. I mean, we still don't really know that, but uh, I feel like we're getting a little bit more calm. But, um, you know, that first week of just the fear and the unknown, and that's usually what plays the part in everyone's emotions is, is that fear and unknown of, of what we don't know and what we don't know is going to happen. And so really trying to utilize my book and, you know, think about what are the facts I can put into play, what, um, you know, what, what self-talk I can work out and, and um, you know, thinking about my business and, and the people that I'm talking to, my employees, I have 125 employees, um, you know, being uh, calm and collective for them, um, trying to uh, put out the best information that we can, keeping them, um, you know, engaged and, and communicating to them. So, and communication is probably the other one, you know, just really that's been something every week. We're so disconnected right now from our employees and we're still working from home. We're still trying to, you know, do certain parts of our business. Um, in the NASCAR world, we've got iRacing going on right now, which is the virtual racing. Yeah. So we're trying to apply that to our sponsorships and marketing and social media. So there's still a lot of work to be done uh, when it's all said and done. And so just, uh, you know, communicating to the employees, communicating to those that aren't working, what's going on. They feel so bad that they can't do something right now and, um, and contribute. So, uh, it's just a really tough time to uh, figure out kind of 
to, to not get too disconnected from people, you know, and to really stay engaged as much as we can while we're working in our closets. <laughs> and then, you know, it's so interesting because your family's known for this, but one of the lessons is my favorite saying, which is be kind to your future self. And you have an entire chapter on kindness and showing and displaying kindness. Um, how, you know, do you apply that today when we're so separate uh, there's so many different issues. You know, I have so many people, I'm sure as you do, that are reaching out from close family members to employees to community members. I sit on boards of charities like you do, and I live by being kind, but I know also that I have to take care of myself in order to take care of others. And that's probably the biggest balancing trick that I have. I've always had it, but today more than ever. How are you dealing with the balancing trick of being and showing kindness? Gosh, it's, um, it's something that, uh, you know, I, I go overboard just the same, David. Um, I want to help everyone and, and I, I lose control of my own self in doing so. I lose control of the things that I need to get done and I need to accomplish. And, and this, um, this time has, uh, uh, just I've been catching myself and stopping myself in the mid afternoon going, you know, stop and breathe, take care of yourself because I've, I just want to help everybody. I want everyone to get through this. It, it pains me to think about, uh, you know, some situations I'll give you, I, um, uh, have, uh, been really inspired by a lady that I met through a Facebook friend who works with the homeless down in Charlotte, which is about an hour from here. And, uh, you know, for the last probably four to six months, I've been uh, wanting to help her out just different ways. And, and my gift in a lot of ways is financial. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. I'm, I'm on different boards, but then doing extra things, I don't have a lot of time to give. And, uh, and so... Be careful by you know, telling people um, that everyone's going to want you when they find out all I do is give money. They'd be like, well, Oh, get on my I mean, board. <laughs> when, I can, when I can, when I want to do something, I mean, I'm, I'm dedicated. I'm on the board of children's Hope Alliance, which is for traumatic kids. And I get, I give a lot of my time to a different lot of things, but in this particular right. instance, from the homeless standpoint, I can give some financial um, help, you know, and, and um, you know, it may be, she'll put out things like there's a mom and kids that are on the street and they need a room for the night or something like that. And you know, my heart just breaks. And, and so I want to help. And, um, uh, but I found myself just really like, I, mean, I wanted to go take care of them. They're, they're getting thrown out of their areas and all this kind of stuff. And I, I just had to stop and say, Kelly, you can't take care of everybody, um, you know, and uh, kind of pick and, and, and be where you can. And like you said, the most important thing is taking care of ourselves. And then I've got our employees and then I've got my family. I've got two children and a husband in the home um, and, uh, you know, trying to get schoolwork done and things like that. So for me, getting through life for me, and this was something that I learned through therapy is a lot of self-talk, you know, a lot yeah. of uh, just reminding yourself, um, looking for the good, looking for the gratitude, looking for the gratefulness um, is really important. And I think, you know, when you talk about self-talk, it's one of the four things that we can control and all four are included in your book, right? Our mindset, our feelings, uh, of course, our actions, those are all covered in the books. But the interesting thing about self-talk is we can control what we say and hear. And I think more than ever, we have to control what we hear, not only from the news and from the internet and from other people, but from our own self. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, most importantly, what are we hearing ourselves what is that self-talk, that rhetoric, that programming that we're giving ourselves? And I know that's had a great impact on your life. One of the other interesting things is, you know, you really are a win-win person. And, you know, I ran Lee Steinberg, the big sports agency. I've surrounded myself for decades with, you know, like I said, from your father down, just the greatest in the world. And it's very rare that people that grow up in such a competitive family uh, and you have one of the most competitive families in history in America and one of the biggest sports uh, in history in America to see such an abundant attitude. You know, like even, even Danica uh, Patrick, who's both our friends, right? Like sometimes I look at her and go, you are a fierce competitor. You, you're yeah, like a fierce <laughs> competitor. And, and, you know, to be a fierce competitor, I call myself a ferocious Buddha. And I think of you in the same respect. Like there, there's this, you know, ferociousness about trying to be our best, but we're also abundant, you know, almost like a Buddha that we want to help everyone. We want to create, you know, where do you see the best ways to find win-win, you know, when things are difficult and competitive and scarce? 
Well, it's funny that you say that because I, I, I would I would ask you the question in the same of myself. Do you feel like you've always been that way though, right? Because the competitiveness and the fierceness, I think we learned that goodness through those personal experiences. And uh, I can think of Danica exactly. I mean, worked with her from a racing competitive standness and I mean, nothing stood in her way. Yeah. But the transformation that I feel like she's undergone through... Um, uh, as she's come out of the car and this, you know, if you, if you watch her now as a fitness expert and health and, and all the different things and, and the mind and body that she uh, is, is in um, and the spiritual aspect and all the different things that she's uncovering about herself. When we take time to do that, it's amazing. Um, and that's kind of the work that through therapy that I did, you know, just kind of, un, you know, pulling down those walls, uncovering that, jump from the past and, and all those kinds of things kind of uh it, it just brightens you up to this clean new way of looking at things you know so it's funny that you mentioned that because i don't think we're always like that we do no that competitive that fierceness right and um and, and we kind of grow through those personal experiences but um the aim for the win-win uh, uh for me um really was uh, taught to me from my father. And uh, I remember being, you know, in my young 20s, watching him from a business perspective um, and always talking about sponsors and fans, taking care of sponsors and fans. And if we do the right things for sponsors and fans, you know, we'll always come out on the on the good side. And, uh, and for him, from a sponsorship standpoint, you know, having a win-win for, for the race team that he was trying to fund and then for the sponsor and, and trying to do what, you know, they needed to, to get done. So um, that's really always, that's been important and always keeping those things at the forefront. I think that's what's uh, helped propel our business at junior motorsports is keeping um, uh, that, the, that legacy of, of idea, you know, moving forward within junior motorsports to uh, take care of the sponsors and take care of the fans. Um, and uh in that way, aiming for that win-win and, and making sure that we can, uh, that to me, that creates long lasting impactful partnerships. And, and that's, what's important in our sport because we're like 80, 20 sponsorship, you know, winnings, which is not true for a lot of the sports. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the other aspects, you know, obviously your family name and your family is so important. And yet, like you said, everyone in your family is so active and so productive, yet you're married with two kids. And one of the biggest benefits uh, and values about slowing down, uh, I was with Marshall Falk, the famous football player. Mm -hmm. and we both, yeah. He said the best thing about this is both of our moms are always telling us, hey, stop, you know, slow, you know, and here once again, we get to stop. And, you know, I told everyone I'm probably since I'm 24, I've never stayed at home for a whole week in a row. Uh, since I've been 24, I've always been gone at least one night. Um, and so not only to be home consistently, but I have three teenage daughters, 21, 18, and, and 16, and I have a 10-year-old son. I could have the best reality show in the world about my family dinners right now. They would take my kids away, but it would be a very entertaining show. Um, but I will tell you, I will not trade all, all the money in the world, all my travels, experiences, all the friends, family, executives, and celebrities, entertainers, and athletes, Super Bowls, Pro Bowls, Masters, and Indy 500s, everything I've been to, uh, to what I've experienced the last four weeks. Uh, all yeah, those I've said, that's the one thing through this is I think we have all learned, we've learned new things about ourselves, we've learned new things about our family, we've learned new ways to work and relate to each other, uh, new ways to do things, you know, um, just like doing these interviews by Zoom and Skype and so on and so forth. And we're and a lot of our teens are working in that manner. Um, you know, that's something that you, you would have never said that that's the way you want to do things because obviously working one-on-one -on -one with people and in groups and, and, you know, in, in the same company of people usually, uh, you know, works much better, but, and so we wouldn't even give this a thought, you know, to, to try to work this way, but it's amazing. Um, like you said, the, the different things that have come through, uh, the family time and we're cooking a lot more, we're eating a lot more dinners together. Um, you know, we're working throughout the day. We're another thing too, that I think is really cool is that my kids, I do have three kids, by the way, so I don't oh, want to say the third one. That's okay. I only <laughs> mentioned two because I only have two in the house, but uh, one, my daughter, my oldest daughter is out of the house, but um, they've also got to experience mom's work, uh, what mom has to do, you know, the schedule. So my daughter, she's always, you know, so she, she said, 
you know, well, if you're home, why are you doing all this work? And I said, honey, it still has to happen. This is what I normally do at the office. And, you know, this is what I'm having to do here at home. And so it's been a real eye opener for uh, them as well, I think, to, you know, understand what's going on and, and, and you're being available to be part of conversations that you need to be having during such a tough time of life. That's beautiful. That's why I say I'm in the middle of this miracle and just more lessons. And since your book is about lesson drive, you know, uh, these uh, nine lessons to win in business and life, I want to end with, you know, you have learned so many lessons through your own profession, your own life and business, and of course, your legendary family. Is there one story and lesson? I'm, I'm a story and lesson person. Is there one story that you want to share either from your dad, your family, or yourself that provides a great lesson for, for everyone? Oh gosh, see, that's put me on the spot, David. Yeah, mm. that's what I'm about. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Interviews. That's why we make it editable. See oh, everyone? Oh goodness. <laughs> you know, I mean, this, this isn't a particular, um, this isn't a particular story, I guess, per se, of a one incident, but, uh, you know, something that my dad, uh, I think something that's really helped us from a family business and, and people ask Dell and I how we work together, you know, what was your brother and sister, you know, how do you work together? It's family, so on and so forth. And the fact that we have a lot of family members that work for us, you know, we probably have about 10 or 12 of the 125. And uh, one thing that, and I, I never understood it when it was actually happening, but our dad, we never worked directly for our dad. So I never worked at Dell and Incorporated. Um, you know, never worked under his foot, uh, never was in a situation where, you know, I could run to him and say, Hey dad, you know, such and such isn't treating me right at this job or whatever. Um, I did work in the souvenir business, which, you know, he had a hand in, in some way, but he was never my, you know, he, he always kept that arm's length situation, um, in business and personal relationships. And, uh, I never really understood it because I thought, why wouldn't he want us working, you know, in the family business and even for Dale to go race there, it took lots of arm twisting and turning for him to finally get that ride in the Xfinity car, uh, the Bush car at the time. And, um, and that was just the way my dad operated. And, and I, I always questioned, I never understood it, but I think it set us up so well to now handle that same situation of, of working with family, working with relatives, working with friends even, because all of that can be difficult and keeping those boundaries of relationships. And um, it's not always easy for everybody to do that, but um, that was something that uh, looking back, I can say that, you know, I think worked really well. Um, I can't think of it. I mean, I learned a lot of lessons, believe me. Huh? We had, a, <laughs> had a pretty crazy, yeah, we had a pretty crazy childhood in terms of lessons learned, but um, yeah. That's awesome. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a funny story. Let me tell you a funny story. Yeah. Funny lesson. Right. So um, for my 16th uh, birthday, I got a Monte Carlo Fastback, okay? Long, big old car for a 16-year-old girl, right? And my dad said he didn't want anyone, if anyone ran into me or I ran into someone, he didn't want me to get hurt. Well, I hated this car, okay? And, um, and so... Every, I would always try to find something wrong with it because he had a dealership. And so I'd send it up to the dealership and the dealership would give me a little Beretta or a little Z24, a little sporty car to ride around in. And uh, so one day I, I think dad finally figured me out. And one day I sent my Monte Carlo up there to get something worked on. And the general manager came driving in our driveway in a black Chevy Caprice station wagon for me to drive. <laughs> That's a, that was a big lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Be thankful for what you got. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh my God. Oh, well, I so much appreciate your time and the lessons that you learn. Make sure everyone goes out, learn those nine lessons to win in business and life. Drive uh, by Kelly Earnhardt Miller. <laughs> and uh, just such a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your lessons, sharing your time. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.